Welcome back to the Star Family Wisdom podcast. I'm Jenna Layden, the founder of Star Family Wisdom and also a former global vice president for Whole Foods Market. Things have changed in recent years because I am now leading people in their spiritual initiation processes. Star Family Wisdom is a podcast, modern day mystery school and community for your spiritual and cosmic evolution. And we're passionate about helping you become the new human, helping you shed the past that we've been carrying here on earth and evolving in a different way, evolving into a new way of life, a more spiritually grounded, um, spiritually expansive way of life where we can really experience all of the beauty that life, the universe has to offer us. So today on the podcast, I wanted to share a little bit more about my personal journey. And I recently got interviewed by a woman that I had worked with for many years, and she interviewed me about the movement towards your dream, about following your dream, and how do you get there? How do you find that dream? How do you move through the challenges, the setbacks, the, the moments of fear to even accomplish that dream? And, and this was such a, a fun conversation. So I wanted to, to reflect it back to you guys and to the audience. And, you know, recently I had one of those, those moments of internal knowing. I had this moment of lots of synchronicities showing up in my life. And, you know, I've learned now to tune in to those synchronicities, to tune into what is the universe trying to communicate to me here? What direction am I supposed to be taking in life? And, and you know, I talked with this woman about, you know, really tuning into the calling of our soul and recognizing what our soul is here to do and experience and what our soul really is excited about. Like what lights us up? You know, what gets us excited to go through our days and and, you know, a lot of us, you know, have not even been able to tune into that because of the layers of fear and programming that we've been living with because of these societal and cultural expectations around what our life is supposed to be. And I was there for a long time. And, and so as we start to peel back those layers of fear and those layers of negative programming, as we start to recognize okay, there's a fear here, but where is it coming from? Like, where's this fear actually coming from? And, and if I might be thinking about a worst case scenario, something negative that could happen in my life, well, is that actually a likely possibility or is there a different possibility that could unfold? You know, so we can go through these processes of really unpacking What's driving our actions? What's driving our um, desire to stay in a situation, to continue down a certain path in life? And, you know, over time, I started to tune in, you know, to that inner calling and that inner knowing of this is what feels exciting. This doesn't feel as exciting anymore, right? When we can start to tune into that that's our soul guiding us. And recently that started to happen. And sometimes when this happens, it's so not logical. Like it goes against what our analytical and our logical mind, our ego sometimes wants to believe is right for us. So recently, as I've been progressing on my path of spiritual initiation, I started to get called to a particular location and a particular um, school and spiritual lineage in India. And while I'm familiar with, you know, Indian spirituality and Hinduism and, you know, I've studied a bit of that and, you know, have studied a bit of yoga, you know, I've not gone really deep on the yogic traditions. And so as this started to occur for me, I realized, okay, you know, I think there's something here. I think I'm supposed to be, you know, following that path, but this feels like really weird timing. And this, this feels like, you know, a big trip to make just to go study some, you know, a, a very specific and particular yogic tradition. 
But as I started to, you know, just tune into that question a little more and tune into what felt exciting and what felt right and what felt in alignment with all of the synchronicities and the opportunities that started to open, I realized this is a moment to take action. And when I was talking in this recent interview about that, that moment of knowing, that moment of following your soul and following your calling, we also talked about how do you push through the fear? Like, how do you push through that, that logical mind, you know, coming in and saying, no, that's silly. <clears throat> Why would you do that? Well, you know, as we're in these moments of, should I do this or should I do that? You know, we can also tune into the body and what's the body telling us? You know, do I have anxiety in a particular area? Am I feeling tension in a particular area? Am I feeling anxiety and tension related to one situation versus another situation, right? And are there, are there aspects of that anxiety or that, that bodily sensation that I can tune into to get answers? right? So is my body trying to tell me something here? And so I went through that process recently, and soon enough, I will be sharing about my journey to India and my journey to a specific location for a specific reason. I'm going to share about that after I get back and I've integrated that experience. But this moment of soul calling is not always logical and it does not always fit the prescription we have been given by society and by our culture by our parents and what we got taught in our younger days about how life is supposed to unfold so as we're on this path of spiritual initiation as we are learning about how to recognize what is right for our soul yeah, we are going to meet moments of fear. We are going to meet potential challenges or roadblocks that are like these tests from the universe, right? Life tests us and life gives us opportunities. Life gives us opportunities to follow what is right for our soul. And it's going to test us in that a little bit. And, and when we can say yes, and still push through some fear or we can say yes even though we don't have it all figured out the universe loves that the universe loves us to be in that open accepting non-knowing place and so when we can you know approach life from a place of following our passion following our inner knowing even if we still have some fear involved and say, I'm going to take this next step and see what happens. Sometimes the universe provides even greater, more beautiful opportunities for you that you never would have thought of. So, you know, this also becomes this opportunity to recognize where we can release our ego desires or our, you know, our kind of train of thought that um, tells us we should have all of the answers or we should, you know, have the perfect plan in place for our lives because we got taught we should. This also becomes a process of releasing that to the divine mind, to source, to spirit and saying, I'm following my passions. I'm excited about this. And here's ways that, you know, I can be a good person in the world, be of service, all that sort of stuff. And I don't have all the answers and I'm a little scared and I might need some help, but I'm going to take the step and I'm going to see what happens. The universe then is going to lay out the next steps for you. That's how it works. And, and taking that first step can be really hard. I remember that moment of leaving Whole Foods, recognizing that it was time to leave recognizing that as i told this woman in the interview that slowly over time inside i knew that staying was chipping away at my soul you know staying at whole foods which i loved and i you know had passion about for a long time as my new interests and my new passions started to turn on in me 
it became really clear that if I didn't follow that, if I didn't, if I didn't give that a chance, and if I stayed, I would start to, you know, just lose a little part of my soul over time. I would, it would chip away at, at that light that's inside of me. And we can start to feel that sometimes, you know, when we're in these situations where, you know, it's okay, it's working, you know, it's, it's, it's been good for us, but it doesn't quite feel right anymore. And it feels hard to stay or every day more and more, we're just, we're dreading it a little more. We're, we're kind of not like that excited about it anymore. That's a sign that it's, it's time to make a change. And so as I started this process of tuning into that and recognizing that, you know, I was really starting to not feel as excited about what I was doing. I was, I was really looking forward to getting off work so I could just focus on what I loved and what I really wanted to do. That started to tell me something, right, about how my energy was being pulled and, and what was going to be healthy for my energy long term. And so when we can start to tune into that, then we can also start to develop a little bit of a plan, ask for some help in developing that plan to make a transition. And so life is about transitions. Life is about meeting that next moment. Life is about saying yes to what spirit is urging you to say yes to. It's about saying yes to your soul. It's about saying yes to what might not feel totally logical in the moment, but what is staying true to yourself. You know, recently in the interview with John Yost, we talked a lot about this, about that, you know, moment of feeling fear around telling people about our experiences, but also recognizing that if we didn't stay true to ourselves and if we didn't share that, we were holding a lie. And that lie that's inside of us becomes poison. And, and if we're holding on to something, a secret, a situation that's not for us, you know, if we start to lead and live a lie, well, that poisons our soul, it poisons our body, it poisons our mind. So no matter how, you know, wild and crazy or scary it might be to, to really be your true self and to expose that to others, to expose that to the world, we have to, we have to, otherwise we, we get sick. We don't, you know, we don't move through life in healthy ways and, and there's a lot of that out there right now, right? Because we have been brought up in a, a culture and a society for the most part that has not allowed us to really tune into our authentic selves, right? We get put in these boxes. We get raised to go into certain jobs and then do that job. And, and the whole time we're doing that progression, right? We're moving through that system that has been created most of the time, you know, we're not really tuning into what we're that excited about. We're, we're being influenced by all these external events and all these other people. And so, so we get this opportunity now as adults, you know, if you haven't had this opportunity to really say, who am I? And like, what do I want to do with my life? And, and what am I excited about? And what am I passionate about? And sometimes, you know, that's going to be completely counterintuitive. It's going to be completely against what you've been told you're supposed to be doing or, you know, what feels safe even. So, you know, we're, we're healing from this cultural phenomena of not allowing our souls to express themselves in their authentic, unique ways. And, and we also have been programmed with so much fear about what happens, right? We are holding so much, you know, programming within us from past lifetimes, from this lifetime on earth, that when we meet those moments, when we arrive at that moment of knowing there's a fork in the road, right? My soul could go this way or my soul could go that way. When we arrive at that moment, all of a sudden, 
fears come up. And sometimes the fear is not even about that. Sometimes the fear is stemming from some deeper wound, some deeper place. And so, you know, we can, in that moment, recognize, okay, there's, there's, there's fear here, but you know, what are, what are all the possibilities, you know, for how this could unfold? If I chose this path or I chose that path, what are all the possibilities, right? And, you know, for, for those watching who may have, or listening who may have, you know, dealt with anxiety in their lives, know that I went through major anxiety in my life, in my, my earlier years. And, and I went through a process of cognitive behavioral therapy to really understand how's my mind wired? And, you know, these negative thoughts and these like spiraling negative thoughts that would happen, how can I counter that, right? So if I'm thinking all these, you know, negative what if possibilities, right? If my mind is going there, like what if this bad thing happens? Well, what if this happens? What if they say this? What if they view me this way, right? Well, you can flip that script, right? And start to think about it a different way and start to think, well, what if all these amazing things happen? And what if, what if, you know, something does go wrong, but if it does, then what's the actual worst case scenario there, right? Sometimes even just moving through that process of unpacking those beliefs and reframing those beliefs in a more positive way can then help us start to, you know, make peace with the idea of taking that chance or make peace with the idea that, okay, you know, the, the, the potential, you know, for something quote unquote bad to happen is not that great. And, and here's how I can get out of it. If, you know, it doesn't work out, you know, we can, we can go through that process of helping ourselves navigate these big moments of life change, life transition, following our heart, following our soul. And, and, you know, recently with going to India, that was part of, you know, my process. I shouldn't go to India by myself. I've never been there. What am I doing? You know, why, why would I be doing this? Okay. So I had to stop myself, right. And say, but there's all this other possibility for why this is happening and how this could unfold. And I think I just should take the chance on it. And so, you know, when we, when we do the work to really tune into what feels exciting again and what what is inside of ourselves that's wanting to be expressed then we can start to meet life in these more brave courageous you know moments and these in these brave courageous ways and and so this conversation recently um you know, where I was interviewed about bravery and how do you follow your dreams and how do you find, you know, your, the path to fulfill those dreams. You know, we also talked about how life presents initiations, life presents you opportunities to grow. And so, you know, sometimes on that journey to fulfilling our, our purpose or, you know, that journey to following our dreams, it's not all going to go perfectly, right? Because we've got things to learn. We've got things to, we've got challenges to meet. And part of our job in this life as souls is to meet life, is to learn how to meet those moments and say, okay, this is happening, right? And this is our spiritual work, right? To find acceptance in that moment, to find non-judgment, to, to not equate a setback or a challenge with lack of worth or, um, or failure, right? To really start to, you know, view these, these moments of challenge as, okay, this is here to teach me a lesson. This is here, this is here to show me something I'm not seeing, or it's here to, you know, give me some experience that I need, that I might need later. And, you know, again, most of us were not raised in an environment where that was our thought process, right? When we meet hard moments, when we meet setbacks, when we meet challenges. And, and so, you know, our ability to not spiral, you know, into a really negative place or to, to not even 
you know, be hard on ourselves in that moment is a process. But when we can get there, when we can, you know, do the spiritual work, move through our initiation processes in a way that help us, you know, just hold space in those moments for ourselves from a place of non-judgment to ask the question, what, what can I learn? You know, what, what am I not seeing here clearly when we can, you know, offer ourselves in a place of not knowing, right? Like we don't need to know it all. We can, we can be open. We can be accepting. We can be non-judgmental in those moments. That's then how we progress forward. So as we, you know, move forward in our spiritual journeys and as we gain power spiritually as people, as we um, you know, evolve in these more profound ways, that also means life is going to challenge us a little more sometimes, right? Because our, our souls are ready for it. So our souls are only going to experience what they're ready to experience, right? So, so know that when those moments show up, you've got this, like you're, you're meant to be experiencing it. It might be freaking hard. It might not feel good in the moment. That's for sure. I've been through a lot of those moments, but it's again, how we meet it. You know, we can feel all the feels, you know, and feel it all, but then also be non-judgmental. We can also be open. We can also say, thank you for the lesson, you know, and move forward in a different way. So, so in this recent interview, we talked about, you know, gumption and that, that like inner power, that inner strength that we develop over time. And, you know, I believe, you know, we do develop some of that inner strength and that inner power by facing those challenges, by, you know, meeting these moments that show us what we're capable of. And, and so we won't know what we're capable of unless we meet those moments with a yes, unless we meet those moments with, I can do this. I may not have all the answers. I may not know exactly how to get to my dream, but I can do this and I'm going forward, right? So as we, as we progress spiritually, it becomes part of our work to meet life in those powerful ways and, and to hold space, you know, for, for those hard moments and to recognize the lesson in them. So, so very soon, um, as this is airing, you know, I'm, I'm probably in India and we'll be coming back with some, some wisdom to share. And, you know, this, this whole journey of life, you know, is also about reconnecting with the other aspects of ourselves. And, you know, I recognize now what's going on here that, you know, as my spiritual journey has progressed, most of the situations and people and places I have encountered after saying yes to that healing, that transformation, that spiritual journey have been moments for my soul to reconnect with a place, a person, a situation that it is familiar with, that it has experienced before, or that is relevant for my soul's healing and my soul's reclamation of power. So when we, you know, meet these people, situations, you know, places that our soul has known before, we're reintegrating, you know, lost parts of ourselves. So, you know, sometimes that is, you know, maybe a more like negative karmic event that happens and, and we're, you know, we're integrating aspects of our soul through that. And then sometimes it's, you know, a, a beautiful moment of reconnection, reunion, you know, visiting a place that, you know, feels so familiar to your soul. And, and that's another process of integration. So we're doing both right now on the planet. We're here to heal big karma, lots of karma we've been carrying and shed that, shed the ancestral trauma, let go of that old energy and, and reclaim our soul power. So, so, you know, I think this, this trip to India is part of my soul retrieval process. There's some soul retrieval happening here. And um, for those who have um, been part of our shamanic initiation or who um, are familiar with some of the other initiation processes that um, we can go through with Star Family Wisdom, 
you'll know that, you know, this process of soul retrieval, this, you know, reclaiming lost power is something critical for us at this time. And when we do that, when we become more whole, when we balance our masculine and feminine energies, when we release all that, that old energy that we don't want to carry anymore, we can call in the new energy. And then when we have repaired our blueprints, our energy field, when we have come back into that state of wholeness that we're supposed to be in, we start to experience reality differently. Like seriously, the universe like presents a completely different version of reality to you. So this is our work. This is our work to reclaim our souls, to meet our fears, to meet the challenges of life, to say yes to our soul's calling and to our dreams and our passions and our desires, and to follow that with an open heart and, and to ask you know, for the help and the guidance to help you get there. So I'm looking forward to sharing more about the India trip with you when I get back. And I would love to support you in our shamanic initiation program that's starting in May. We're going through another round of the Rites of the Moon I Key, which is a 10 week shamanic initiation process where you receive energy transmissions to upgrade and transform your field. And we start to get you connected with new archetypal energies and archangels you can work with in your practice. And we engage in lots of different shamanic practice as part of this as well. So it gives you lots of new tools to put in your spiritual tool belt. If you're new to shamanic practice, if you've been doing it a while and you haven't been through the rites, you need the rights, you need the energy transmissions to help you get to that next level. These energy transmissions are designed to help you become the new human. Like this is what we're here to do. So that's one reason I'm so passionate about the rights of the Moon I Key and this initiation process. And if you want to go through an initiation on your own, not in a group setting, the Rites of the Moon Ikea is live on Zoom. We offer a seven week Goddess Isis spiritual initiation and Syrian energy activation course. This is a self-paced course. You can take it at your own pace, come back to it over and over and over. You get lifetime access and it's designed to take you through the seven gates of initiation, moving up the seven chakras. And we do work virtually, you know, in meditation in the pyramid in Egypt and the temples in Egypt. And, and you get introduced to the archetypal story of Isis and Osiris and, and learn a bit about the ancient Egyptian spirituality while going through seven different rituals and ceremonies that are designed again to help you connect with that powerful high vibrational Syrian energy and shift and clear heavy energy that you don't need to carry anymore. So check that out. The links are below. It's my honor to support you in our initiation in becoming the new human. And I will see you next time on the podcast for another fun conversation or interview. Not exactly sure what's coming next, but like and subscribe if you found this valuable. Don't miss any of our videos and leave a comment. Let me know what has been like the biggest part of your initiation. And are you following your dreams? Are you following your passions? Do you need support getting there? Like, how are you doing in that? Because that's what we're here to do. It's, it's a hard thing to do here on earth. That's for sure. But that's what we're here to do. So um, it's my honor to support you in that. So I'll see you next time in our next episode. Bye for now.